Welcome back to the game cave. We're playing Pillars of Eternity. Huh. Let's see here. Last time we escaped death. And um bore witness to some strange cults. And we may have also lost our minds. So you know. Just your average day in the life of Bear, the adventurer and barbarian. And uh, you know. Madcap uh, connoisseur. And there are people running around. Uh, shades of people, at any rate. Those might be the things that flicker in uh, the sight in our vision. That the thing mentioned. Oh, Zorup! Rage! Oh, there's uh, there's a lot of them. All right, hold on. Let's attack the one in the middle. Pay attention here. Okay. Okay, that's one down. That was sixty percent chance to hit. Okay, we are flanked. Right. Fortunately, they're beasts, so we have a greater percent chance to hit them. Ah, didn't even get halfway to, uh, to our death. Fantastic. Zorup tongue. Yeah, let's put that away. The struts and supports are large enough to be ribs and vertebrae of a dragon. There's also a corpse here. Quarter staff, padded cap. I'm not gonna wear that. I got horns. Got horns on my head. I mean, what are you gonna do? Wear a doofus cap or, you know, show off your horny? Or show how horny you are. <laughs> Let's see. Young Wolf, alright. Got a 71, 81, 71 percent chance to hit this bastard. Ow! Fuck him up! Yay! We learned all there is to know about the Young Wolf. Shattered pieces of a crate are strewn across the dirt along with a few muddy vegetables. There is some river reeds as well. The grass is still flattened behind the wagon's wheels. Barrels of cabbages, potatoes, and squash have been overturned and abandoned. The scroll of Tanglefoot. Rapidly grows a patch of twisted vines that surround and entangle anyone unlucky enough to be caught inside. Characters who set foot inside the area become hobbled. Which hobbling does lowers dexterity by two, movement by one and a half, and reflex by twenty. So not really all that great. I think we might sell this scroll. If we have uh, the lore of two, we can cast it, but I don't really see the point of that. And we already have the maximum number of camping supplies. Get ready to see that message. The game was um, really balanced around being played on normal, where you have uh, a capacity of four. But that also means we can, um, you know, 
rest and then pick it up. One thing, come on. Okay, so this here is what's his name? Naunton. How do Let's you do? Talk to Naunton. This man appears to be hurriedly dismantling his camp in quick, jerky movements. He looks up as you approach. His expression is tense and drawn. Greetings, he says, a little breathless. On your way south, is it? He wipes his brow, turning to face you. The sooner you're clear of this, these woods, the better, I think. Never mind the woods, there's a strange machine up in the north. There were these figures clad in black, performing some kind of rite. The man's uh, brows furrow in concern. Ruins. The old thing with in place. You'll want to keep clear of those. Whatever you saw, strange things always crop up around in within sights. I doubt those people you saw were up to no good. I don't doubt they were up to no good, right? Let the Glenfathans deal with it. They don't take kindly to true trespassers, whatever their intentions. And there's enough to worry about in these woods as it is. His expression falls. I... We came across a beer in a cave to the north. Got the better of a friend of mine, and I just made it out with my life. In any case, this forest already cost me a friend. I'm heading home before it takes anything else. What happened to your friend? We didn't see it coming. Norton's voice shakes a little as he speaks. We, we, we were following a stag, Pearly. He saw something in the branches, and we went tearing off after it. We uh, all but stumbled into the cave. Poor Pearly didn't stand a chance. The bear was on top of him before he knew what was happening. The beasts will take what they will, I suppose, he smiles sadly. And this time, Galavan's favor fell upon the boar, the bear. Where did you find this bear? In a cave, it weighs up that way. He turns to point to the northwest. I wouldn't seek it out if I were you. It was a great brute of a beast. I would hate to hear that it took another life. Who are you then? Name's Nanton. Born and raised in Gilded Vale. Haven't had a spot of luck since. His face twists. Luckier than Pearly, I suppose. Alright. So we'll avoid that area for now. We can... Move down there. And I think we will. We'll leave the exploration of the rest of this place for a little later. So let's head to Gilded Vale. Oh, Gilded, huh? You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. He glances at the gnarled, leafless monstrosity of a tree that's next to him. Are you mad? No wonder this place looks half empty. The only answer you hear is the buzzing of the flies from the tree. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollow-born child? What are you talking about? An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Raderick has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. I should warn you, stranger, 
Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. He steps to the side and inclines his head ever so slightly towards the deformed tree. His lordship's wife is with child and do any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn just southwest of here. I've been, um, well, a tree over there. Urgot doesn't even look over his shoulder. Ah, yes. Not everyone has accepted the measures necessary to keep our village safe. Ever since Lord Radric banished the mothers of Holoborn, some have taken up arms against them. And while he's been searching for a cure, he's been beset with frauds and opportunists. We've had ciphers, wizards, and animancers come through town, taking the Lord's coin and promising to end the curse. Lord Radric finally decided to make an example of those who would profit from our tragedy. It points to the body of a dwarven woman. The latest was an animancer from the Valian Republics, who claimed to know techniques that none of us had uh, seen. By now, we've seen it all. I see. Um, you said something about Holoborn and Widewind's legacy before. He blinks. I forget that you foreigners don't have the curse in your homelands. The Holoborn have been a scourge upon the Deerwood for almost 15 years now. He lowers his lip, lowers his voice to a whisper. Children born without souls. He shakes his head. Pitiful, dumb things that breathe. Barely, but, not, but do not truly live. Some say the Holoborn are a disease. Some say they are a punishment from the gods. He raises his empty hands. In truth, no one knows, but they began spreading after the Saints' War, and so the name Widewind's Legacy stuck to in honor of that foul, blasphemous pretender. His voice shakes with vitriol. I see. Lord Radric's decrees that decrees may seem strict at times, but he has our best interests at heart. Oh yeah, I don't doubt it. <laughs> if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. It's important that everyone in Gilded Vale understands our rules. Um, I've been feeling strange ever since a close call with the Buick. Is there someone in town who can help? Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an animancer. However, the only animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. Right, he hints at the uh, dwarven woman hanging from the tree there. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Jesus fucking Christ. This character is somewhat of an asshole. Urgot. Um... Yeah, before I got here, I saw several people conducting a strange ceremony near some ruins. He regards you carefully. You'll want to mind where you mention that. Trespassing on Iguithin ruins is illegal, not to mention dangerous. You probably saw someone attempting a new ritual to appease the gods. People will try anything these days. Barath have mercy, we certainly have. Maybe so. Like I said, it's best to stay away from those sorts of places. All right, Keep goodbye out then. of. Listen. 
Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. It seems your arrival is ill-timed. Urgot looks out towards the east, his expression unreadable. He blinks slowly and turns his attention back to you. Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. What do you mean? Or don't threaten me, little man. He shakes his head unmoved. It is no threat, only a warning. Lord Radric will tolerate no threats to his kin, or those who live upon his lands. Uh, grief will not make him more docile. Oh, great. What do you mean? You come at us at a time of mourning. The legacy has struck at the heart of Gilded Vale. Our efforts to redeem ourselves in the eyes of Barath must be redoubled. He sets a steady gaze on you. Oh, really? Uh, well, I'm going to stare right back at him. So, um, does this affect your, the Lord's offer to new settlers? I don't know why exactly we would want to ask about that. But I think it's the only way to sort of continue the dialogue. So I will. I can be sure of nothing right now. I advise you to get some rest. The inn. Or a stable for all I care. Find me afterwards. I will know more soon enough. Yeah, don't count on it. So let's go to the inn then, shall we? Things are bound to get worse now. Don't be stupid. They can't possibly get any worse. Yeah, well, they are kind of running out of branches. You see four people gathered by the door to the inn. Their raised voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument reaching its climax. The first figure raises its hands for calm. The face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and stature suggest an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. Ooh, a fight. One of the other uh, men glares at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from drink, but his gaze is focused. You've got some gall mocking us in our own village. We don't take ill treatments from foreigners, especially not Adirans. Go on, say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fie, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! <laughs> I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head! <laughs> this is a misunderstanding! I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarrel. That is something surly, raw flickers through his eyes. That's where you're wrong. Hmm. You're not going to take that from him, are you? Let's antagonize him. We want to fight. They turn their ire on you. No, and we're not taking it from you either. <laughs> Charge! Actually, rage! Oh. One strike. Bang, bang. Right, as the rest of the uh, last of the attacker falls, the elf turns to you. The tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. 
Actually, that was fun. Then I can't imagine you lack for entertainment in these parts. He straightens his hood. And you note the remains of a fraying embroidery on his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel. But the leatherwork beneath suggests st it's sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvisor, at your service. How'd you manage to get stuck out here? He laughs uncomfortably. That is something of a long story. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? We was traveling with a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Oh, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious, what exactly did you find there? A Bewick. And you survived? I've heard such a thing was impossible. But it seems you either have a knack for timing or the favor of the gods. What are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. And you? Uh-huh. I've been experiencing strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. He nods to the gnarled old three at the center of town. His uh, darting glance uh, takes in the tumble down buildings of the fallow, rock steering fields. I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. Just how did you manage to cross those three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. Well, did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. Ah, that. He clears his throat and adjusts his sleeves. As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pints, and the accent doesn't help. I heard the same thing. For a moment, he looks as if he's about to say something else. His expression brightens with mischief. But before he can speak, he forces a tight smile, biting his lips so hard you expect to see blood. Finally, his face relaxes, and he shakes his head. I should speak more clearly next time. My apologies. I see. You don't exactly look like a settler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. Right. I should get going. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. So do I. Let's go then. Excellent. I shall follow you. Awesome. So we get a new party member. This is Aeloth. Or Aleth. I think it's Aeloth. He is a wizard. And uh, I have an option set. I should uh, show you that right now. Let's see. Game. And... Um, hmm. Difficulty. Right. You want to turn off this 
auto level companion. But I think that there is uh, an option to um, be able to manually to be able to like manually um, level everybody because normally when you um, normally when you let me just think about how I'm gonna rephrase this and let's take these clubs here nice When somebody joins your party, their um, level is adjusted to yours. And there is an option to turn on so that you level them up yourself from level 1. Right? So you don't have to, like, race to find the uh, the um, NPC. You're, you're looking to join your party as early as possible so that you can affect their development more effectively than the uh, game does by default. So that's something to consider. I want mechanics as much as possible. Uh, right. I forgot to check. I was gonna check what sort of spells we he had from before. I can choose one spell. I think he has this one, the Sunless Grasp. Ghost Blades. See what that thing that calls the field of unearthly blades into existence, inflicting immediate pierce damage and a hobble deflection on targets in the area of effect. Okay. Deals some damage. Chill fog. Cause a blinding light. Ice fog into existence, inflicting blindness and freeze damage over time to anyone in the area of effect. It lasts for 19 seconds. That's actually uh, not uh, bad. Spirit shield. Surrounds the caster in a shield of spiritual energy, granting an increased damage reduction and concentration bonus. For almost a minute. I'll take that. And we get to uh, get an ability as well. Apprentice sneak attack. when they are at their most vulnerable. Right. Melee damage, range damage. That is something to uh, keep in mind. That's a really good ability. Uh, I forget exactly what triggers sneak attack, but it's things like paralyze and blinded and um, stuff of that nature. You know, stun. So you deal more damage to people who are debuffed. If it's like a physical debuff, it, not if it's like a mental one. Like, if they're confused, then I don't think Sneak Attack applies. Grimoire Slam is pretty cool. This allows the wizard to smash an enemy with a Grimoire, energized with spiritual energy, causing large damage and knocking the target back. One per encounter. That's That can be good to, like, get someone off him. Because he, he doesn't really want to be in melee range. He's a wizard. Under the protective shield, the magic dramatic boost the visage def deflection. Is it for only for 13 seconds? So I don't think so. Blast! Generates a blast on the target when using wand, rod, or scepter, doing a modest amount of damage to all enemies. Oh! So that's a passive. It gives him an AoE on normal attacks. 5DR bypass. So that's pretty good. And the radius is pretty nice. Huh. 
Huh, huh. I don't know. See, I'm thinking maybe um, he should have... Right, scepter or rod. I think it's a scepter he's using now. It's not a wand, I know that for sure. Rapier may... He is a, a nobleman, right? So he gets plus accuracy, which should help him hit with his normal attacks. Defensive stuff. Utility, fast runner. Quick switch. Heart of the storm, yeah, damage reduction from shock plus shock damage. So you have uh, flame, shock, spirit of decay, and secrets of rhyme. All our um, different damage types. We can boost that. I think I want him, uh, Alof, to be basically a um, a debuffer, like focus on control spells rather than damage spells. Because I think we got the damage part covered. However, if I could start debuffing and making people more easier to hit and shit, that would be great. Uh, I think I'll take the accuracy. Because at the beginning of the game, accuracy is always good. But also, you have a limited number of spell charges. And uh, with the reduced capacity for, you know... Um, supplies, uh, camping supplies. There's a limit to how many times we can rest in order to gain those back. So I think I'll take uh, Weapon Focus Noble. But for our uh, standard attacks a little bit. Cool. So, let's have a look now. Right, he has 12 might. So, he does plus 6% damage. So that's not a lot. He has 10 constitution, so he should not be in a melee situation. Some good decks, that's nice. Perception... Well, it's plus 6 interrupt, plus 2 accuracy. That's good. Yeah, intelligence of 16, plus area of effect and duration. So, he has a lot of intelligence, that makes him good at... Um, that uh, makes him good at, um, you know, area of effect spells and debuffs. So I think that was the right call. He also has Arcane Assault, to per encounter. Raw damage versus uh, Reflex. If successful, Daze. Dropping accuracy by 10, Dexterity, Perception, and Intellect reduced by 2, and Attack Speed reduction. That's really good. So, I should use Arcane Assault against the targets that Bear are fighting. Distant Advantage, plus Accuracy, Deflection, and Reflex against Distant Enemies. That's good. Distant Enemies is um, more than 4 meters away, I think, in game terms. Second Wind is pathetic, but that's fine. Archimere's Dazzling Lights. Mine is Will and Daze for 15 seconds each. Um, versus Reflex. Fan of Flames. Burn Damage versus Reflex. Cone of Fire in front of the caster. 120 degree cone. That's pretty good. He has uh, Minoletta's Minor Missiles. Crush slash corrode damage versus deflection. Three projectiles. Oh, so that's. Um, that is three times. This is per missile, right? So, potentially, it could be very good, but it is against deflection, so it would be best against um, archers and um, archers and wizards, you know, spellcasters. Spirit shield, 
This, that's the one we picked now. And Wizard's Double, plus 40 deflection until hit or critically hit. So this has no duration. That is actually nice. Okay, cool. Let's see about the inventory. He has uh, a unique armor. Most companions, I think all companions, have their own armor. And, uh, you know, it's cool to be able to upgrade that. So he has the overseeing uh, enchantment, which gives him plus area of effect. Plus 10% ability area of effect, so that also applies to spells. Recovery speed minus 30. Yeah, it's a medium armor. Good uh, damage resistance. Let's see, Aeloth's leather armor has been lightly enchanted to enhance the spell casting abilities. It also appears to have custom decorative patterns stitched into the surface. Unlike most dear wooden leather armor, Aeloth's has been tailored to tailored in the Adir style, meaning that the torso is more heavily reinforced, but it lacks sleeves due to Adir's hot and humid climate. Right. And here's the grimoire. Um, ooh. Learn. 100 coppers. How many coppers do I have? I have 160. Uh, maybe. I'll think about it. I want to be able to upgrade my armor as soon as possible. Right. Ah, fuck it. There we go. Right, the dazzling light can daze somebody. I do have the daze, but this is an AoE daze. And daze uh, gives them, yeah, accuracy reduction. So that can be very good if I'm surrounded. I think this grasp is the odd man out actually because it's um, it is against deflection and it's also a melee spell like it's a touch spell so let's remove that add in spirit shield instead pretty cool awesome so this is how you select your spells uh, you can find uh, additional grimoires as well and you can learn spells from them instead of picking them and when you level up with your wizard so that's always something to keep in mind um, also um, spells have charges so let me show you here you can see we have three level one spell charges so that means that we can cast one of these four spells three times so, I can cast uh, Menelotus Minor Missiles, and uh, Fan of Flames, and Spirit Shield, for example. But then, I'm out of charges, and I have to rest to get them back. This is why um, per-encounter abilities, like Arcane Assault, are so good. Uh, because the, these are per-rest. So, that's the difference you want to keep in mind uh, when you're playing. And I think we want to end the episode soon-ish. I think maybe right about now. But I want to get these clubs in. 51 with a club. Because the club is also fucking accurate. Nice. Goodbye dagger. Let's use two of them. 39 versus 51. Eh... Eh, maybe we'll see how it, it uh, turns out, I guess. Hunting bow we can put away. We'll keep the armor for now. The torch is actually a club. So, accuracy, right. It has shit accuracy.
46. I can do that. Have a torch in my offhand for now. And we can uh, put this great sword into our inventory or our stash. And the dagger there as well. Lockpicks will give to Aloth because I gave him mechanics so he can deal with the uh, different locks and shit. I also have some here, but I can't access them right now. Oh, I can because I'm in town. That's right. All right, we don't need more. Well, let's take the ones we have. Let's also give him a torch. And oh yeah, we got the cloak of protection. I forgot all about that. Fortitude, reflex, and will. I suppose we'll give that to our melee character. Yeah. Cloth physics. Greatly improved in the second game. Okay. Um, I'm rambling now and I need a break. Thank you so much for watching. Mm. Next time we'll go to bed at the inn. And um, see about exploring Gilded Vale a little bit. Should be a fun episode. So uh, join me then. And uh, so long.